Hi, my name is Ron. I'm the owner of a vape shop in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania called Independence Vapors. Uh, I'd like to talk today about titanium wire as it is used for temperature control inside of the atomizer of a vaporizer. Now, you may have seen some other videos I recorded called The Danger of Vaping Nickel Wire, and I'm going to compare titanium to nickel and then talk about titanium as it is used a little bit um, inside of a vaporizer for temperature control. So, why use titanium? Uh, t the idea of a temperature control device is that uh, it actually is not reading temperature. It's reading changes in resistance. And so you need a wire that has low resistance and is very, very sensitive to changes in power and changes in heat and temperature. And therefore, it will give more accurate readings to the device. And the device does a uh, mathematical calculation that looks at changes in resistance and equates that to temperature and temperature changes. And so titanium um, and nickel are two metals that are used as a heating element um, that will give the accurate readings the device can use in temperature control mode. Um, so titanium wire is wire that is 99% pure elemental titanium, just as nickel wire, or Ni200, is 99% pure nickel. Uh, titanium is, has a third less resistance than canthal, but it does have a little more resistance than nickel. Uh, unlike nickel, however, titanium as a metal is not toxic to humans. Um, and it is not classified as a human carcinogen. In fact, there are a lot of medical devices that are implanted into people's bodies that use titanium as a metal to either encase it or it is made out of titanium. Unlike nickel, titanium is not classified by the, uh, as an environmental pollutant by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. And unlike nickel, titanium is not on the list of extremely hazardous substances put out by the EPA. And also unlike nickel, in a compound, titanium does retain its water insolubility. So these are all advantages to titanium being used as a heating element uh, as opposed to nickel. So what are my concerns when we're looking at the use of titanium as a heating element inside of a vaporizer? Well, first, when heated, titanium can oxidize and can form titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide can be seen on the coils. Um, they won't really turn into a vapor. Titanium dioxide, according um, to the United States Center for Disease Control, has a boiling point of over 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I can't imagine any situation where your vaporizer get to that, hot, that, that elevated temperature level. And so if it oxidizes, you will see white powder on the coil. Now I say C, and this would be if you have a coil that you can actually uh, expose, that you can see. Uh, if you're doing an RBA, which is a rebuildable atomizer, Probably the easiest to see would be an RDA, a rebuildable dripping atomizer. That is a manual atomizer that you can actually see the coil on and you have to constantly drip juice onto it uh, so it'll vaporize. So you will be able to see the coil and if you're using titanium that way, you'll be able to see any oxidation. Now, titanium dioxide is a food additive. It's a whitener uh, that has been used and is generally safe, I think, for ingestion. Uh, as if you inhale titanium dioxide, studies have shown that it can be a mild lung irritant. Now, in general, do we want to be breathing this in if we're using it inside of a vaporizer? Probably not. But this technology is very new, and very, very little research has been done, particularly very little research done by any manufacturers putting out the devices, as to what happens if it oxidizes and if you, you breathe it in uh, on a regular basis. Um, so that's one concern. However, the more troubling concern with titanium uh, is that titanium is a combustible metal. In other words, titanium is a metal that can burn. Its combustibility depends on mass, so a large block of titanium is not as combustible as small pieces of titanium, titanium shards, uh, or titanium dust. Titanium dust is highly combustible. Um, my concern is not so much big pieces of titanium and a coil with uh, a low 
um, gauge and a very, very thick coil uh, may be able to withstand the heat and you know may not combust, although again, this technology is very, very new and the way people use it may vary. Uh, my concern is really with manufactured coils where you cannot see inside of the um, coil with regularity and to know what's going on there. These manufactured coils um, would have a titanium wire inside of it are made overseas uh, in conditions that we are not familiar with and really don't know what's going on. If there is titanium dust or titanium shards in that manufactured coil, it is certainly possible at high temperatures that the coil could ignite, that the small shards could ignite, you could actually get a fire inside of your vaporizer. And when titanium burns, it creates a lot of heat um, in order to put out a titanium fire, you need a Class D fire extinguisher that very few places have. And if you look in your home or in your business, most likely your fire extinguisher is not a Class D fire extinguisher. So this is a concern because um, it is possible that titanium could combust. Uh, titanium dust and small shards of titanium can actually start uh, to burn um, at temperatures as low as 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so you know, something that I think is concerning when we're using, we're considering using titanium on a device. Um, so, in summary, when we're looking at titanium, there are a number of things to consider. Number one, titanium should only be used on devices that are designed for temperature control with titanium. Titanium is low resistance wire. However, it's different from nickel, and um, the device needs to be able to um, estimate the resistance changes so it's showing you temperature uh, accurately. So only use devices, only use titanium on devices designed for temperature control with titanium. Never put titanium on a device that is a regular wattage mod or use it in wattage mode on a device that may have temperature control. Uh, that is very, very dangerous. Um, I do have a concern about the manufactured coils. Are they made cleanly? Is there any titanium small shards uh, or titanium dust inside of a manufactured coil that has the potential to actually ignite? Uh, are the devices working properly? One of the things that is certainly concerning about any temperature control device is that the microchip inside needs to be manufactured properly. Um, it can't be glitchy. Um, it needs to be safe. And so when you're working with a metal that is an actual combustible metal, um, the device needs to be giving you accurate temperature readings. If they're off, you could have a serious problem. You could actually have a fire inside of your vaporizer. And I think, again, it is very, very important that manufacturers um, step up and give us more information about these devices and show uh, not just how devices are used, but usage instructions of how you know, to make coils, how to use the devices, proper resistances, and things like that. Um, I think when, you know, now that we're moving to all these exotic metals like nickel, like titanium, uh, that have potential for harm to people, I think that the manufacturers really need to show, um, need, need to give us more information about safety and about how the device devices are being used. So would I use titanium? Uh, I'm actually very excited about the next generation of temperature control devices that are going to actually look at temperature readings. So inside of the atomizer, uh, it will actually have some sort of temperature sensor that will give an accurate temperature, an actual temperature reading of what's going on inside of the atomizer. And with that, you can use canthal. Now, canthal is what we use now for most vaporization. It's a very tolerant metal that, whose resistance does not change that much at different heat levels. I think temperature control and temperature protection uh, could be a wonderful addition uh, to our current usage of vaporizers. But we need to really, really look at safety. We need to look at the metals and things that are being used inside of it uh, and make sure that uh, we really know what we're doing when we're using these devices. Thank you.